Well, here we are. It is Sunday, December 3rd, 2023. Uh, as you know, I don't often do videos on Sundays, but uh, uh, something came up and I wanted to let everybody know because there's a time problem. There's an auction coming up in a couple of weeks on December 14th in Italy, in Milan. And it's an interesting auction um, uh, it, it, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the, the auctions are being run by a, a friend of ours, Carlo Santi, who started his own auction house. He had worked uh, for another a number of other auction houses over the years. He lives in Italy. And he started his own auction house, Marco Polo Auctions. And as many of you know, we talked about his first and second auction that he did, and they did pretty well. And apparently he caught the eye of Fenate in Italy, which is a, uh, a very prominent prominent, very, very large auction house that's been around since the 1950s, uh, this firm. And they've asked him to come in and they're work. Now they're working. It's sort of a partnership between the two companies. It's very interesting that Fanate uh, uh, decided to uh, do this. They have a history of partnering with auction houses, with people that they like, and they, they wanted to partner with, with uh, Carlo and his firm. So what they've done is they have an auction that's online right now. And uh, the links are down below here if you want to, if you want to go to either of the auction houses or to Invaluable where the items are posted, you can. Uh, the auctions are listed on both the Marco Polo website and on the Fenate website and on Invaluable, and I suspect maybe on Sale Room or someplace else, but I know they're in those places, and I'll have links down below here directly to these, these sales. And as I've talked about in the past, one of the issues uh, regarding buying in Italy is always the shipping stuff. And, and we've talked about shipping a lot. And I, if, if anything in the sale looks like it's of interest to you, I'll include the uh, information email address below here. And it can also be found on the Marco Polo site um, here under Contact Us. Uh, there is an e there's a map and all that business and down here is the email address which is pretty simple it's just info at marcopoloauctions.com and uh, if you if you, you see something in here you like take the time to email uh, uh, Carlo or the or the office whoever's there handling it and inquire about things like shipping and get some questions answered because there's some nice things in this sale and as I said the other day in December you can find yourself some pretty good buys the people the art market's not always paying as much attention as they should be to auctions and it, it, it is the opportunity for somebody who is willing to put out a little bit of energy a little bit of effort and uh, reach into the market and uh, um, talk to the people that are doing auctions and uh, see what can be done because I, I think this auction looks pretty promising the estimates are all very very reasonable uh, the, the items look quite good and um, it's just a matter of getting those uh, shipping and export things out of the way. If you live in the EU, of course, it's no problem. And if you live in Italy, near Milan, um, it's even less of a problem. You just drive over and pick your stuff up. But I know that's a concern. It's, it's something we've talked about a lot. And uh, you can start with that because the auction's worth taking a peek at. And this is it. And it starts out, the first part of the sale, uh, those of you that are interested in coral, coral, Chinese coral carvings, there are some really great examples in here. I'm going to talk about a couple of them. There are 17 lots. If you're a coral buyer, a carved coral buyer, or a stone buyer, there's some good carved stones in here. Um, lapis lazuli, turquoise, jades, of course and other things, uh, look into it. But there's a couple of uh, 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 coral carvings I thought were just splendid. This is, I think, the, obviously, I think the best one. It's a very large uh, uh, example of two guanyins. In, in, in the color of the coral on these is exceptional. One of the ways that they value coral is by the richness of the color. And uh, provided the color is natural, and these I assume are natural, uh, the color looks natural to me. It's a very, very strong um, uh, orange red, very, very, very dense. Very, it's, it doesn't have that washed out pinkish look that some coral has. This stuff, this is like very high quality coral, very high quality carving. Uh, if you look at the details, uh, the facial features and so forth, the back, the front, and so forth. Um, these are these are really finely done. Uh, notice the, the way the hair is done here, the, the way the, the, the hair is looped on top, and then the folds of the robes and everything. This is, these are really exquisite carvings. And uh, the stand is made of ivory. Uh, it, obviously, if you're in the U.S. or outside of the EU, you cannot you cannot get these. Uh, you cannot buy these and get them exported. You'll never get a. It'll be very difficult to get an export permit. But if you're in Europe. 
think about these because as a number of people commented after my my ivory video ivory there is fine you can buy and sell it as long as it's antique but it, this is on a, a, a coral which is has some restrictions in some countries but it's also on a painted ivory stand in this green color absolutely wonderful and this is a big ivory it is 38 centimeters tall so it's it's about f uh, 15 inches tall uh, it's estimated at 34,000 euros now that's that's a, a lot of money for coral but not for a piece of coral this big this well carved of this color on a meticulously carved ivory and paint decorated stand uh, it's quite a thing if you're an ivory if you're a coral buyer this is probably the best piece of piece of coral you're going to see all year um, and there's another example of it uh, uh, over here another a red one let's see where, where is it gone here um, there's a couple of them in here uh, oh this one up top this 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 one here this is a smaller one I like this a great let it load up there it is. Um, and it's done in the form of a vase with vines climbing over it. But the color, again, is quite exceptional. And there's even some sort of graining in it here with birds and so forth. A very beautiful example uh, that that I liked. Uh, th these are the, my two favorites. Uh, it is uh, this one isn't terribly tall. It's four inches tall, but very, very fine quality. And they date it to the late Qing Dynasty. The other one is probably Republic period, but the work is great. This has an estimate of two to three thousand euros because it's smaller. But an incredibly fine example. All right, and then over here on the uh, Chinese porcelain section, uh, there's a lot. There's some interesting porcelain. One of them is this. This is this is. Uh, let's see how big is this dish here. It is uh, about little about nine inches in diameter, and it's a grisaille decorated Qinlong period uh, dish with Juno riding in the sleigh, uh, Euro European classical scene with a puce border. Uh, it looks like it's in uh, good condition overall. It's got a minute nick on the rim over here, which is a really easy fix. But the grisaille decoration looks perfect. The grisaille deco decoration on this is quite excellent. And uh, the estimate is 12 to uh, 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 1,500 euros or around 1,300 euros, which is about right. It's a, it's a pretty rare export type of dish. Nice thing. And again, small enough that you can ship it pretty easily, I'm assuming. And then there is this, a Femi Ver porcelain vase. There's some great late Qing pieces in here. A lot of late Qing and early Republic pieces aren't all that interesting. But uh, these pieces are quite good. And what I always find interesting is the difference in taste in objects that you find in different parts of the world from the Chinese market. Because you think, well, it's all Chinese and it all ends up everywhere. It really doesn't. And in Italy, Italy you, see, you see styles and types of porcelains that you don't often see in the United States, you don't often see in London, don't often see in Hong Kong, uh, because it's stuff that was absorbed by that market's cultural tastes. And it gives you some interesting variation. The same thing happens in Paris. It, when you see auctions at Tijan and over there, you'll see... Uh, ceramics that have a different aesthetic and objects that have a different aesthetic that you might see in a New York sale or in a California sale. It's just because of variations of taste. But there is this. This is a, a Republic period um, Femi Ver reticulated uh, jar. Um, it's 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 late Qing to Republic period, but it's absolutely fascinatingly made. Here's the bottom of it. It's got an apocryphal rain mark on there, of course. It's unglazed. It's this is all on biscuit, it, but it's a pretty wonderful looking uh, vase. I have to say, with these sort of wavy, reticulated wave lines, and then clouds above it, and then stippled ground leading up through all these foliage, uh, bits of foliage and so forth on top. Really interesting thing. It's 37 uh, centimeters in height, so it's about, uh, that works out to about 15, 15 or so inches in height, so it's a good size vase. has a modest estimate of eight to, uh, 800 to 1,000 euros, or about uh, a starting bit of around $800 on it. Uh, but it looks it looks like a nice piece of porcelain. It's an interesting bit of porcelain. And then this is a re another Republic period example, a form you see that was very popular during the 18th century um, with uh, Liu Hans or, or scholars sitting around a table uh, done during the Republic era. And they, they're doing some calligraphy and there are bowls of nuts out. They're sort of having an afternoon for themselves. This fellow is sitting in a very, a very attractive root chair and so forth. They have some garden stools over on the side, lots of accoutrements attendance in the background and it looks like it's in very very good condition and it's got these sort of lightly colored almost coral colored handles there's some wear to the enamel on this one um it has a chin lung mark or something on the bottom yeah uh but it, it, it is republic uh, clearly republic or late ching 
but very attractive. And then there's another scene on the other side. It has an estimate of uh, five to seven thousand euros, or about a five thousand dollar opening bid. But that's not a crazy number for the, for the prices we've been seeing lately for these pieces. And it is 45 centimeters tall, so it's an 18 inch tall vase. That's a big pot, and it's probably uh, around uh, uh, 15 inches in width, judging by the photograph. So it's a big piece of porcelain meticulously painted and appears to be in great condition. So that's something worth looking into. And then there's this, a really nice pair of Wutsai uh, Kangxi period uh, square uh, bottles. Uh, and it's an unusual to find a pair of these, and it's unusual to find a pair that are in great condition. Uh, these look to be in very, very nice shape. All right. There's a, a tiny bit of a, they have metal. What's also interesting is that they have these, um, it's been given metal mounts and the metal mounts they used, because often on the edges of these pieces, you see uh, uh, fritting where the, where, the, where the slabs of uh, porcelain are put together, and you often get frits going down it. And in this piece, they very nicely, um, uh, it looks like they, they, they applied a metal mount to it to cover, to cover any areas that might have fritted. And those, I don't know whether the mounts are in silver or not. Um, they could be, you want to check on that. But the colors of the enameling, you may have noticed, is extremely strong. Very beautiful coloring, and the enameling looks to be in great condition. It's a nice pair of bottles, and it's a pair, which in pairs are always desirable. And the estimate is very reasonable. Um, the opening uh, bid is at around $500, a little over $500, 500 to 1,000 euros for both. Um, which seems to be about the price for each. You know, roughly uh, lately, these these the better of these bottles have been bringing nine hundred to twelve hundred dollars. So the estimate is reasonable. Um, get a condition report, but also again, shipping isn't going to be a big issue with these because they're very very nice and um, will won't take much room in the post. And then this a Kangxi uh, figure, a Sun Kai glazed, uh, Sun Sai glazed uh, a goat with a puppy on its backside over here. It's it's pr pretty terrific. I don't know if it's a puppy or another, a, a baby, a, a baby uh, 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 ram or something on there. A ba I'm not sure, or a lamb. I don't, I don't know what that is, whether it's a dog or not. But it's very nice piece of pottery, um, beautifully glazed. When I first saw it, I, I I was wondering if they were if they felt that it was it was a tongue. But the brightness of the colors, uh, I tend to think I agree with them that it's probably a um, uh, uh, Kung Shi period, but they did do some of this work. And this is an unusual form on biscuit, and it looks to be in great shape, and it's pretty good size. According to this, it's 14 centimeters tall, so it's about six inches in height. So this isn't a little tiny two or three inch thing. It's it got six inches in height, and it looks like it's probably about nine, eight, eight, seven or eight inches long, uh, estimated at 800 to 1,000 euros. Nice thing. And then this horse plate, I had to throw this in, of course, because I love horses on porcelain and objects. And this is a nice one, nice for Milrose plate. Uh, they date it to the uh, uh, 19th century, uh, Qing Dynasty, obviously, and uh, very interestingly painted. Nice colors, frolicking horses, and of course, you know, uh, the, the the history of painting horses uh, goes back a long time. The hist the, there's a there's actually a book out there um, called Horses in Chinese Art and Chinese Culture, and uh, then of course they became very popular subject matter for the uh, Jesuit priest Giuseppe Castiglione when he was in, in China. He painted the famous horse scenes, and uh, here they are again, all these great horses, and I love I love the the colors they pick from the pink horses. In particular, and uh, this very warm orange one over here. Uh, but it's, they're very nice among beneath these willow trees, mountains in the background with insects and butterflies floating around. It's a terrific piece of porcelain. And uh, let's see, it is uh, about just a little under, uh, just about 10 inches in diameter, um, 10, 10 and a half inches in diameter. And they dated as Qing. It looks to be in good shape. And it has a 500 to 800 euro estimate. All right, which which is somewhere in the five hundred and fifty to eight hundred and fifty dollar range, which seems pretty reasonable. And then over to this. This is something you don't see very often. This is Republic, but this is part of that school of um, 
ceramics that they did in the late Qing and Republic period where they used uh, 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 porcelain bodies and then they clad them with gilt archaistic relief patterns that look like metal, that look like bronze applied to the pot. And uh, we've seen a couple of them in the last few weeks, the, the more typical uh, sort of pear-shaped bodies with with the impressed uh, cartouche with a, with a dragon in it or something like that. And this is a variation of that, of that form. It's a very attractive one. And on the ground, they, in, on the porcelain, they have these uh, blue and underglazed red sort of splotches to make it look like age. And then you have these uh, this very nice ram's mask on here. And the, all this relief work is all, of course, porcelain that's been done to look like uh, gilt bronze and down to the foot. This is a nice looking pot. Uh, there's a picture of the bottom of it, uh, clearly old, not as old as the mark. It's got a, a, a Chin Lung mark on it. It's not a Chin Lung vase, but it's 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 a late Qing to Republic vase, uh, but very, very attractive and quite large, 42 centimeters in height. Uh, that puts it up at around uh, about 15 or 16 inches. It's estimated at uh, 10 to 12,000 euros, which I think is actually in line, given what some of the smaller ones have brought. And this is a particularly interesting form. Um, again, this is the kind of thing you don't see done in this style in, in, in European auctions very often or in Hong Kong sales or any place. But you do find things like this in Italy and France. Uh, it's very much in the European taste. And I think, I think it's, you know, if you're a Republic porcelain buyer, this is worth going after because you're not going to see another one for a long time that looks like that. And then this, the pair of, uh, these are a pair of uh, 18th century uh, Famille Rose export dishes with the uh, Payne family uh, crest at the top, uh, nicely decorated, beautiful borders on them, and it's a pair. They appear to be in very good condition. And a lot of these are coming out of, a, a, I don't know if this one did, but there's a particular collection that they uh, 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 been drawing pieces out of. This came from a collection in, uh, da, 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 in oh yeah, there's a Tuscan collection, and then there's another collection that we'll, we'll be seeing bits from too, uh, that these pieces came from. But this is a nice pair of plates, estimated a thousand to twelve hundred euros. Seems like a absolutely reasonable estimate, and uh, something again worth looking at. And then this, there are two pieces of Kangxi turquoise glazed porcelain in the sale. They're both estimated at about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. This one is. It measures about eight inches in height. Uh, very, very classical archaistic pattern on it. Here's the bottom of it, and this is oh, this is the 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 the, the, the from that the other collection, the, the Parado uh, of, of family collection. Hold on, Parado. I want to get the full name in here. Uh, Anticita Parato in Milan bought this back in the 1980s, about 50 year, 40, 50 years ago now, uh, and it's a Kangxi period vase. Measures 18 centimeters in height. Which is about seven, I guess seven and a half, eight inches, uh, estimated at seven hundred to a thousand euros. It should do better than that. Our, the, these uh, Kang Shi examples um, done with this glaze are very, very uh, uh, collectible, and it has a wonderful uh, pair of horned masks on the side. They look like I think they're probably quillen heads um, done on here with the horn coming out of the head, and then all of this uh, patterning cut into it. Uh, nice looking little pot. Again get some information on it, get the condition report and go from there. And then there's this, uh, and this is a, a well-known type of uh, Republic period base, but has an unusual decoration on it. Uh, these are the ones that have the applied bats on the shoulders. You've seen the, 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 the iron red bats, but the field decoration on the body, instead of being of some sort of repeat pattern or little cartouches and that kind of thing, it's uh, pairings of, of, of pheasants on each side with, with a double gourd stamp with a signature on it. And the back of the vases are, are calligraphy, uh, full of calligraphy decoration. It's got the, uh, the famous, uh, you know, overglazed blue, uh, uh, Chin Lung mark that was done historically at the Atelier at the Imperial Palace on Chin Lung wares. But these of course are Republic period. They're made later, uh, but they look absolutely fine. They're very attractive. And, uh, the estimate is just three to five thousand euros, which I think is under the money for these. Uh, they measure thirty-six centimeters in height, so over about uh, about fourteen or fifteen inches, I guess. But very attractive, really, really nice pair of Republican period vases. And uh, if you're in, if you're into those, again, this is a good sale if you're a Republican buyer or a late Qing buyer. <clears throat> then over to this, 
Uh, this, I think, is, is maybe my favorite piece of porcelain in the sale. Uh, it is a small dish with European figures and Famille Rose. Uh, well-painted seat of Joseph escaping the advance of Zucchilia, uh, the white of Potiphar, uh, a European interior with columns and so forth. Um, a half-naked woman tries to restrain a young man. <laughs> And here's the scene, uh, but uh, very unusual. No border, just done on an open field like a canvas. Uh, obviously, uh, very European in its taste and content. Um, really interesting piece of porcelain. There's a fair bit of information on it. I guess this 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 type of porcelain um, has been written about by a number of people in this. Uh, 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 that's down here. They go through it uh, with all the people that are that reference that have written about this particular pattern before. Um, and Eleanor Gordon in the America had handled some of it. And you'll find th uh, they'll mention Soam Jennings and all the sort of you know the legendary names from the Chinese art world are mentioned in relation to this plate. And the estimate is very low, eight to twelve hundred euros. Uh, it, it measures, what did, what did I say it measured? Six inches in diameter, six inches in diameter, but it's a gem of a little plate, really, really is. Here's the here's the picture of it under some other light. Here's the back of it with, with its collection stickers on air and so forth. Looks absolutely legitimate. Nice piece of porcelain. And then there's a bunch of good silks in there. They've got three or four really nice robes coming up if you're a robe buyer. Um, uh, this is a nice one. It's a Kisi silk robe. Uh, uh, dates to, they just dated as Qing 19th century, I think probably first half of the 19th century. Very tightly embroidered, beautiful rondelles, very tight, very controlled. Uh, nice uh, crashing wave pattern and, 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 you know, the bands of light coming down off the bottom on, on, a, on sort of a purple sil silk uh, ground. Very, very nice. Estimated at uh, 10, uh, 10 to 12,000 euros, which is about right. We've seen these sell for anywhere from 10,000 up to uh, up to around 18,000 euros, depending on the auction and where it's being done. And uh, again, on the shipping issue, silks are easy to ship. You fold them up, you put them in a small box and off they go. So you don't have to worry about that too much. And here's another one that's estimated at seven to 9,000, a more traditional dragon type uh, uh, robe. Uh, it looks to be in very, very good condition. And again, seven to nine thousand euros is the estimate. Um, and that's that's pretty much the tight range they've all been selling in. So the estimate isn't out of hand there. And then this one has a lower estimate, but I like the colors better on this one than the previous one. Uh, but for some reason, they've given it a slightly lower estimate. But I think it's still worth probably seven to seven to eight thousand dollars or it should be. Um, here's a nice enlargement uh, to look at. Uh, the, the gold threads all appear to be in pretty good shape. Not, you know, sometimes they, you, you look at these up close and the gold threads are all broken and uh, damaged and mended and whatnot. I don't see that here. Uh, the colors look good. This looks like a mid-19th century robe. Uh, and beautifully done, five to 7,000 euros, which I think is ex extremely reasonable. And then over to this, there is a, a good bit of ivory in the sale. So if you're in the America, uh, you can skip skip ahead a little because you can't get it. But in Europe, you can get this. And there are a number of nice ivories in this sale. Um, this one measures 51 centimeters in height. So it's uh, that works out to about 19 inches. It's a very, very nice figure of Guanyin. Uh, beautifully carved all the way down. Antique example. Um, how are they dating this? Uh, Qing late 19th century. Sounds about right. Uh, with an 1800 to 1900, 1800, a uh, 2000 to 3000 euro estimate, 1800 euro opening bid. And I think that's probably in the range. That's what it should be worth. This is a big piece of ivory. Uh, it's very, very large, 19, 18, 19 inches in light. And it, it, of course, is carved in the shape of, of, of the uh, elephant tusk itself. But the details are quite exceptional. And there's some ink work on here as well in the hair and in the folds of the robe and so forth. It's worth looking for, looking at. And the other thing that, that was in this, and this caught my eye. I just like this because I like wood carving so much. Uh, this is a, a table screen that they've dated as being um, a, a probably Republic period or so forth. And I, 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 the carving on it makes me think it might be a little older than that. Uh, the way the the way the uh, way it's worked, the details look awfully fine. 
Um, and you don't see many Republic uh, wood carvings done to that quality. And it has that sort of that that uh, orangey uh, uh, reddish lacquer that they it's a semi clear lacquer that they used to coat things with uh, back in the late Qing dynasty. But the, the way this is carved here, the Buddhist, the, the umbrella with the tassels and this very, very fine uh, detailing with the shadows appearing and so forth. And then, and then the, uh, the the facial features of the gentleman of the of the of the immortal, um, and then the attendant beneath him. This looks like older carving. To, this looks like second half of the 19th century carving to me. Um, and it's estimated at just 500 to 800 euros. It looks like a relative bargain. It's pretty good size too. It's 79 inches high. So you can keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting it shipped. It comes apart. But uh, but it doesn't come apart, you know, into little pieces. You're going to have some pretty big pieces. But it's 79 centimeters, which is around uh, 28 inches tall. So it's a, it's a pretty big screen. But it would look wonderful in it, in any house. And, and I like the fact that it's reticulated because you don't see these reticulated screens too often. And overall, it looks to be in great condition. Um, there's the back of it with some calligraphy on it and so forth. Very very nice. And over here is another screen. This is a table screen. It's not a great big floor screen. This is a fairly small screen. It measures uh, uh, a, a, about three feet by three feet, roughly. Um, so, it, 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 but it's uh, 18th or early 19th century. Nicely done lacquer, gilt lacquer. Uh, it's got a good looking surface on it. Uh, it is, appears to be in quite good condition because this has a black lacquer ground, which is very prone to buckling with, as the wood dries and so forth. And uh, this one looks awfully nice. All right. And uh, it me it's uh, estimated at two to 3,000 euros, which I think is right on the money. But it's, it's a very elegant screen, and it'll fold up. So getting that shipped isn't too bad. And then moseying along China Trade, there's a bunch of good watercolors. And there's also a, a, a large number of, if you're a folio uh, a painting buyer, you know, the folios that have, you know, maybe a five or 10 or 15 painting watercolors in them. Uh, there's a slew of them in this sale. It's worth checking. But there's also this, a really interesting set of four mid-19th century China Trade, or 1830 to 1850 China Trade oil paintings on canvas. And um, for those of you in the U.S., um, pay attention here because uh, American collectors tend to like ones that have um, uh, American flags appearing and in this painting um, in three out of four of them the, there's uh, an American flag either above one of the Hong one of the Hong buildings or on one of the ships and here is an American ship right in the center of the scene uh, this is of course a very famous scene in, 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 in the harbor and uh, there's, there's several others here uh, they, they have some crackular in the oils, which is very, very typical. Um, and they're, they're all four of them, and these are big paintings. They are uh, 40 centimeters by 60 centimeters. So they, they're roughly 18 by, 18 by 24 inches each. Um, all four of them are estimated at just 10 to 15,000 euros. So that works out to about 4,000 euros per painting, 5,000 euros, less than 5,000 a painting, which I think is extremely reasonable and, uh, uh, the, you know, if you're if you're a China trade buyer, the, I think these are worth getting, and they look like they haven't been they haven't been you know messed around with, cleaned or restored at all. They look like they're pretty much original. You, know, you can ask them to check the backs for you if you're interested in them. And, uh, and then, of course, you have these uh, this tripod sensor, uh, 18th century, a very nice example with uh, gilt uh, gilt and brown patination. Uh, estimated at uh, two to three, two to 2,500 euros. The last one that seems to me that we saw of one of these, I think that brought about 8,000 or 9,000 US. So uh, I think two to 3,000 is, uh, two to 2,500 is pretty reasonable. Um, and then there's this, this is one of the highlights of the sale. And I highlighted it, the, it's a Mahakala. Uh, he is the, uh, one of the protectors of the Dharma in the Buddhist religion. Um, very, very nice. And this is a copper example. And I wanted to show this because this thing is huge. It is uh, over two feet tall. It is uh, it's 66 centimeters. So that works out to about uh, uh, 20, 27 inches in height. Uh, very elaborate, beautifully done, and it looks like it's in good condition. And uh, they've dated it, uh, I think, pretty accurately. It's Tibetan, obviously, and uh, 18th or early 19th century. I would think, judging by the patina and some of the details on the back of it, the way it looks, it looks to me to be very possibly an 18th century piece. This area here, the way this looks, the surface and so forth, 
and the workmanship, the way the little the little things like the, the way the, the toes are done and um, the way the hands are done, the elbows and the arms and the bands and all that business, and the way the back hair is done of the, of the flames and the hair. Um, I think it's really quite a nice example. It's got a strong estimate, 40 to 50,000 euros. But in the in the last few weeks, we've seen some awfully good results for Tibetan bronzes. Uh, the last few sales that have gone through the, the, the other auction houses, they seem to have done pretty well. So uh, we'll see. And then over here is a, uh, a pair of jadeite uh, females um, with with cranes. Uh, they they've dated this as 20th century. I suspect they, these look like the typical. The coloring and the carving looks like the kind of thing they did in the 1920s. Um, very nicely done, long, slender, beautifully uh, beautifully uh, done robes on a couple of really nice looking stands on top of it, um, and they measure. Uh, 25 centimeters in height, so about nine or ten, about 10 inches tall, 10 inches tall. Uh, estimated at two to three thousand euros for the pair, not each for the pair. So that's 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 a very reasonable estimate. And then in the Japanese, there's a bunch of Japanese stuff too. There's Satsuma, there's some metalwork, uh, I, I, all kinds of things. But this is something that caught my eye: a pair of wooden panels um, with with uh, relief relief work panels with paint decoration and gilding and all this sort of thing within these sort of bambooed frames that they've had made. The frames look very old, and these appear to be probably. Um, from the uh, of, of end of the Meiji period, and uh, they measure 70 by 51 centimeters. So they're quite tall. They're uh, 70 centimeters tall, as you know, which is about 28 inches in height. Uh, so they're good size. It's two of them, but the estimate is peanuts, six to 800 euros. So that's something worth going after. There's also uh, this very nice ivory Shibiyama vase. Uh, it's about a foot tall, as I recall. Uh, it's over a foot tall, 31 centimeters. So it's it's about 13 inches in height, uh, but beautifully done. Estimated at just eight to 1600 euros, uh, and all the mother of pearl work looks to be quite meticulously done and intact. I don't see any damage to it, uh, which is which is sort of unusual for these bigger pieces of hollow ivory, uh, be, because the, the the expansion and contraction over the years, and it's it's lined on the interior with little seed pearls. It's quite elegant. It's quite an elegant thing. Um, and there's the back of it with, with an entirely different scene on it. And it's on this very nice um, wooden stand um, with a metal banding set at the bottom. Estimated eight to 1,600 euros. All right. And there's a bunch of other stuff in there. I, I just wanted to go through it, give you a sort of a sense of it. Uh, if you, if you, because there aren't that many auctions right now, if you've been looking at live auctioneers and so forth, you're going to notice is there are very few auctions happening right now. The global member pages don't have a lot on them. Uh, uh, th this, this is on invaluable on the invaluable page uh, on the global pages and on the Patreon subscription page, but, uh, it, it'll pick up, uh, I suspect, around the third week of December. We'll start to see a lot of auctions for January and February start to populate all the different sites. But right now, there aren't that many uh, auctions going on. But it's so, so it's kind of fun that something this nice turned up. And because of the oddball time of the year, um, there is the opportunity to get uh, uh, particularly good buys. Uh, just because of, uh, as I've said many, many times, and I've said it in previous years, the, the lack of attendance on the auction scene by s certain people um, get, presents some uh, chances for people to get some great buys. And these are some of the other pieces. There's that turquoise piece we talked about. There's some nice uh, uh, Dewa Blanc de Chine pieces. There's a number of pretty good looking bronzes in here and uh, so on. So uh, do check it out. Okay, I just wanted to run that by everybody before before it gets to be uh, too late to talk about it and uh, give you something to do over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful week. We'll be back in a few days with some more videos. And uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment um, and uh, do all that good stuff. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.